Legend has it that sometime in or near the year 600 AD, a goat shepherd named Kaldi noticed a change in his goat's behavior. After eating the cherry-like fruits of a particular bush, they began to run and jump full of excitement. Curious, Kaldi decided to try out the cherry-like fruits for himself and realized that he also felt full of energy. Intrigued, Kaldi took some of the bush's fruit and branches to a nearby monastery where he shared the unusual events with the abbot who then decided to cook the fruits and the branches. After tasting the bitter liquid that resulted, the abbot threw the entire pot into the fire. Soon however, when the cherry-like fruit started to burn, a delightful aroma filled the air and an idea occurred to the abbot. He would investigate making a drink based on the roasted cherry-like fruit, what we now call the beans, and the first version of the beverage known today to millions as coffee was born. It is not known exactly where and when coffee was first cultivated. Some authorities say that around the year 575, Arab traders took the plant to the southern tip of the Arabian Peninsula, now known as Yemen, where the cultivation of coffee began. Others believe that it was grown initially near the Red Sea in Arabia around the year 675. Still, others say that coffee was discovered in Ethiopia around the year 900. Regardless of its exact origins, it is known that coffee cultivation began in earnest in the 15th and 16th centuries when extensive planting of the trees occurred in the Yemen region of Arabia. The world's first coffee shop, Kiva Han, is believed to have opened in Constantinople in 1475. The use of coffee beans is said to have spread from Yemen throughout the Arabian Peninsula and later to Turkey. At that time, coffee was used as a ritual drink and for its medicinal properties. It wasn't until the end of the 15th century that roasting and crushing the coffee beans before extracting them with hot water became common practice and the modern coffee drink was born. The Venetian merchant Pietro de Laval brought coffee to Italy in 1645 and it soon became a favorite drink. The British started to drink coffee in 1650, thanks to another merchant, Daniel Edwards. In 1652, Edwards is also said to have been the first European to open an establishment where coffee was sold as a drink. A cup of coffee would be sold for a penny. In Paris, coffee houses opened in 1672, and in 1675, Franz George Kalshitsky, a Viennese who lived in Turkey, opened the first coffee house in Central Europe. To Kalshitsky also goes the honor of refining the drink by filtering out the coffee grounds, sweetening it, and adding a dash of milk. Folklore says that in 1723, King Louis XV of France sent three coffee plants to his colony, that's Martinique. Two of the plants died en route and either the third plant or cuttings from it ended up in Jamaica. Brought here in 1728 by former governor Sir Nicholas Laws, who was the governor from 1718 to 1722. Laws first planted coffee at Temple Hall, St. Andrew. Jamaica's climate was so conducive to coffee production that the coffee industry expanded rapidly from St. Andrew to the Blue Mountains and the hills of Manchester, St. Anne and St. Elizabeth. By 1814, there were 600 coffee plantations on the island. In the 1830s, with the abolition of slavery came a shortage of labor and a decline in coffee production. The harvesting of coffee is labor-intensive because the beans are unpicked when ripe, one at a time. By 1850, only 186 coffee plantations were still in operation. Close to one years, 100 years later, in 1943, the coffee industry nearly collapsed due to labor shortages, mismanagement and lack of organization. Overseas concerns were also being raised as to the quality and consistency of Jamaican coffee and valuable markets were lost. In an attempt to address these issues, the colonial secretary created the Coffee Industry Board in 1953. Production became more streamlined, a centralized marketing system and a rigid system of standards control were developed. There are two main types of Jamaican coffee, Jamaica Blue Mountain and Jamaica Prime. To be known as Jamaica Blue Mountain, coffee must be grown, as its name suggests, in the Blue Mountains within the prescribed areas of St. Thomas, St. Andrew or Portland. Package labels indicate if coffee is a blend or 100% Blue Mountain. Jamaica Prime is grown in Manchester, St. Catherine, Clarendon, St. Anne and St. Elizabeth. Jamaica Blue Mountain is cultivated between 2,000 and 5,000 feet above sea level, while Jamaica Prime is cultivated at slighter, lower altitudes. The Coffee Industry Board's trade name for Jamaica Prime is Jamaica Mountain Choice Coffee. It is recognized as a premium quality gourmet bean in its own right. 
The reaping of the beans is only the first stage of an involved operation. After reaping, coffee is pulped and washed at a pulpery, and the wet parchment that results is dried, cured, ratted, and then sorted. Jamaica is one of the only few countries worldwide that allows the wet parchment to sit and age for a minimum of six weeks, so as to ensure consistency. Prior to export, the coffee then undergoes quality control measures including appearance checks and cup testing to ensure the cup quality of the beans. Jamaica's coffee farmers still sell their coffee to the government-run coffee industry board. Many farmers work in cooperatives. 17 currently exist, only one of which is located in the Blue Mountains. There are 12 coffee pulpers, four of which are in the Blue Mountain range. There are six authorized coffee roasters in Jamaica who have permission to market Jamaican coffee domestically and internationally. All commercial shipments are inspected by the Coffee Industry Board, which also issues certificates guaranteeing the authenticity of the coffee. In 1988, Hurricane Gilbert's 150 miles per hour winds damaged 70% of the island's coffee fields and factories causing production to shut down for close to two years. Today, however, production has been restored to former levels. About 75% of the coffee beans produced annually are exported as green beans. Annual production averages 5,500,000 pounds of green beans. Annual earnings amount to approximately US 32 million for the Jamaican industry. Approximately 85% of the coffee exported goes to Japan. The other 15 goes to the UK, the USA and other countries where it often sells for up to US $40 per pound. Although Jamaican coffee maintains its place amongst the best gourmet coffees in the world, in contrast to the United States, where an average of 29 million Americans drink gourmet coffee beverages every day, as in New York City alone, it is common to see a Starbucks almost every five bucks. In Jamaica, coffee bars are just beginning to gain popularity. In Kingston alone, you can find Susie's Bakery and Cafe at Southdale Plaza. Coffee Industries Limited, the coffee mill found in New Kingston and also at the Manly International Airport and Devon House also boasts coffee bar. A Coffee Industries Limited coffee bar is slated for the Sangster International Airport in the future. Now, let me leave you guys with some really important coffee facts. Bach, that's Bach who wrote music, I don't know his first name, I don't really know about that. But Bach wrote a coffee cantata in 1732. Whoever knows anything about what a cantata is or who Bach is, comment in the comment section, alright? Number two, the heavy tea tax imposed on the colonies in 1773 which caused the Boston Tea Party resulted in America switching from tea to coffee. Drinking coffee was an expression of freedom. Number three, the founding fathers of the United States during the revolution formed their national strategies in coffee houses. Number four, in Italy, espresso is considered so essential to daily life that the price is regulated by the government. Italy now has over 200,000 coffee bars, and latte is the Italian word for milk. So if you request a latte in Italy, you will be served a glass of milk. Number 5. Raw coffee beans soaked in water and spices are chewed like candy in many parts of Africa. Number 6. Japan ranks number 3 in the world for coffee consumption. Over 10,000 coffee cafes plus several thousand vending machines with both hot and cold coffee serve the needs of Tokyo alone. Number 7. Coffee is the most popular beverage worldwide, with over 400 billion cups consumed each year. Number 8. Coffee is a world commodity. It's second only to oil. Number 9. In 1727, as a result of seedlings smuggled from Paris, coffee plants were first cultivated in Brazil. Brazil is presently by far the world's largest producer of coffee, accounting for almost one-third of the world's coffee production, producing over three and a quarter producing over three and a quarter billion pounds of coffee each year. Number 10, French writer and philosopher Voltaire, in 1694 to 1778, is said to have drunk 50 cups of coffee per day. That's the video, guys. Blessings, guys, and thanks again for watching. Yeah, if you read so far in the video, as you know, I always have to tell you to type some. Type coffee if you got this far in the video. And I really appreciate you all watching to the end. So, um, I've noticed that you guys appreciate the history videos, especially history of different foods in Jamaica. So guess what guys, I'm going to be doing foods. Thank you for joining. Bless.